Marco van Basten is a Dutch soccer player and coach, a three-time golden ball winner and one of the best players of the 20th century. Ever since he was a child, he really wanted to play soccer, despite the fact that doctors strongly advised him not to become a professional soccer player. In this video, we will talk about the athlete who struggled with injuries and unbearable pain all throughout his career, which is why he was forced to retire much earlier than planned. What happened to Marco van Basten? The end of the legendary soccer player's career. The soccer legend was born on October 31, 1964 in Utrecht in a sporty family. His father Joop was a soccer player in the 50s, but after retiring from sports he worked for a transport company. And his mother, Lenny van der Borg, was a gymnast in the past. Initially his parents named their son Marcel van Basten, but the boy's grandmother didn't like the name. So she began to call him Marco, and eventually everyone else did too. The boy was the youngest in the family. He has a brother Stanley and a sister Carla, who are six and eight years older, respectively. Van Boston Sr. dreamed that his children would follow in his footsteps. So noticing Marco's soccer talent, he started to train him eagerly. He paid little attention to his older children, but you couldn't say the younger one was showered with love either. His father praised him for his successful plays in the field, but mercilessly criticized him for the slightest failures and considered tears an indicator of weakness. Van Boston studied at St. Dominic's school and practiced table tennis, diving, and piano. But still, soccer was the priority, which he played every day on the local fields. One of them was later renamed the Marco Van Boston Sports Park. At the age of six, the young talent began to play in the local amateur team, EDO and a year later he moved to the youth team of the club UVV, which was also based in Utrecht. At the age of seven, Marco had a traumatic experience. His friend fell through the ice when the two of them were walking on a frozen lake. The boy rushed to help, but it was too late. Even after such a strong shock, Duke Van Boston forbade discussing the tragedy at home. Marco kept a photo of his dead friend for several more years until his father tore it up, considering that the tragic memories would harm the child. At the age of 13, the young soccer player drew the attention of a coach of the Feyenoord youth team, but Joop saw his son exclusively at Ajax and refused the offer. When Marco was 15 years old, he started having health problems and the doctor advised him to give up the career of a professional soccer player so he wouldn't end up in a wheelchair in the future. Due to possible early osteoarthritis, a joint disease, the doctor allowed him to play no more than once a week. And yet Marco, together with his father, decided not to stop there. Soon the soccer player moved to another club from Utrecht, Ellenwick. And in 1981, the 16-year-old Van Boston signed a contract with Ajax. He received about $850 a month, which was much less than the salary of his other peers at the club. He worked with the youth team for several months, but after proving himself on the field, he was transferred to the main team. Marco's debut in the main squad of the Amsterdam team took place on April 3, 1982. The 17-year-old soccer player came out as a substitute in the 46th minute instead of the legendary 35-year-old forward, Johan Cruyff, and immediately scored a goal. Nevertheless, this remained his only appearance on the field in the 1981-1982 season, in which Ajax became the national champion. The following season, he played regularly, combining matches with studying at Neil Stenson College in Utrecht and became the champion of the Netherlands as part of the Ajax for the second time. In the summer of 1983, Marco, as part of the Netherlands national team, went to Mexico for the World Youth Championship and scored goals in two matches. In the autumn of the same year, Van Basten made his debut in the main team of the country. On September 7th, he played in the qualifying match for the 1984 European Championship. In the 1984-85 season, Van Basten was once again one of Ajax's defining players, having played in 33 matches and scoring 22 goals. They won the national championship, the third in the athlete's career. In the 1984-1985 season, Van Basten was once again one of Ajax's defining players, having played in 33 matches and scoring 22 goals. They won the national championship, the third in the athlete's career. In October 1985, Marco had another traumatic experience. After losing to the Belgians in a playoff match for the 1986 World Cup, his father informed him that his mother had a heart attack. A few days later, Lenny's condition worsened. She suffered a stroke and fell into a coma. When she woke up, she couldn't recognize anyone. Later, for proper care, she was transported to a mental hospital where she died in 2007. 
In the 1985-1986 season, the soccer player continued to enchant fans on the field. With 37 goals in 26 matches, he became the top scorer of the Netherlands Championship for the third time in a row. Moreover, Van Boston became the best shooter in Europe and received the golden boot. At the beginning of the next season, the Dutchman was still recovering from an ankle injury, but it didn't prevent him from scoring one of the most memorable goals in his career with a shot over his head. However, the pain in his left leg continued to bother him, and during the winter holidays, Marco received surgery, but by that time, another more serious problem appeared. On December 7, 1986, a week before the planned surgery, he received a severe injury to his right ankle. The doctors then let Van Boston play, but as it turned out later, it was a big mistake. Although the coach didn't allow the player to play in all matches and let him miss some training sessions, Marco still continued to play for Ajax in the European competitions. That's when the endless injections, massage sessions, and doctor appointments began. That season, Ajax won the Cup Winners' Cup, which became the first European trophy in his career for Van Basten, who scored the decisive goal in the final. Good performances in European competitions led to the Dutchman receiving the prize as the best European soccer player under the age of 23. And in the Dutch Championship, Marco became the league's top scorer for the fourth time. At the same time, the player, together with his club, won the Dutch Cup for the third time. It was the last title he won with Ajax because his contract ended. In total, the player played six seasons for Ajax, scored 152 goals in 172 games, and won seven trophies. A year earlier, Van Boston could have moved to Milan, but the transfer took place in 1987. The negotiations were conducted in strict confidentiality. Even Juke Van Boston knew nothing about the agreement. The Dutchman made his debut with Milan on September 13, 1987, and immediately managed to score from the penalty spot. The debut was successful, but the rest of the season was mostly spent struggling with a right ankle injury. It turned out that the athlete had been playing with torn ankle ligaments for almost a year, so it required an urgent surgery. Doctors came to the conclusion that the cause of chronic problems was probably a serious sprain in childhood. Marco returned to the field in March 1988 and helped Milan win the league title. Van Boston's participation in the 1988 European Championship was up in the air due to injury. He started the championship on the bench, but in the second game he scored three goals against England. And in the final match, in which the Netherlands faced the Soviet Union, Utrecht Swan, as the fans called him, managed to score one of the most beautiful goals in the history of soccer. It helped bring the score to a victorious 2-0 with an incredible touch kick from an acute angle against the goalkeeper Renat Desayev. Marco himself said that he struck the ball when it was still in the air instead of handling the ball, purely because he was tired. But he was especially surprised that he scored with the right leg, which he moved with difficulty after the surgery. And it was the limited mobility of the foot that helped him spin the ball so that it smoothly descended. Later, this goal was recognized as the best in the history of UEFA, and at the end of the tournament, Van Boston became the top scorer with five goals scored. Marco was 23 at the time, and it was just the beginning of his promising triumphant career. A week before the new club's season, Van Boston won his next trophy with Milan, the Italian Super Cup. At the end of 1988, even despite the small number of matches played at the club level, he received his first golden ball, which he presented to his father. Marco was able to play the 1988-1989 season with almost no injuries. He scored 19 goals in 33 games, taking second place in the list of scorers. Meanwhile, Milan took third place in the championship and won the European Champions Cup, now called UEFA Champions League. In the 1989-1990 season, Milan's winning streak continued. The club won the first European Super Cup, the Intercontinental Cup, and the European Champions Cup, and Marco van Boston's performance brought him the second golden ball. Once again, the Dutchman finished the season as the top scorer, scoring 19 times in 26 league matches. All this despite the fact that injuries continued to haunt the soccer player, and he underwent surgery for his left knee. But in the national team at the 1990 World Cup, Van Boston didn't stand out and didn't score a single goal. The Dutch national team then did not win a single match and went home after the first round of the playoffs. In the next two seasons, Marco Van Basten, together with Milan, won the European Super Cup, the Intercontinental Cup, the Italian Super Cup, became the Serie A champion and the best scorer of the league. 
In 1992, the Dutch national team could have won the European Championship for the second time in a row, but lost to the Danish national team on penalties in the semifinals. And Van Basten was the only one who didn't score on a penalty shot. Nevertheless, he played very well at the tournament, and in December he received the third golden ball. Marco gave it to Milan's owner, Silvio Berlusconi. At that time, the athlete extended his contract with Milan for 2.5 years with a salary of $5.25 million per year and underwent another surgery on his right ankle. The surgeon removed part of the bone from the ankle joint, but it only helped to ease the pain. Van Boston was expected to be out for three months, but his recovery was slower. The Dutchman returned to the field at the end of April 1993, played three games in Serie A, and scored his 300th goal. But the lost match against Marcel in the European Champions Cup final on May 26 was the last in his career for the legendary striker. However, at that time, the soccer player still hoped to return to the field, dreamed of going to the 94th World Cup. But another cartilage augmentation surgery was required, which was carried out in June. In the same month in the old castle de Haar near Utrecht, Marco van Basten married Lisbeth van Kapelevine. They started long before the soccer players transferred to Milan, and in 1990 they briefly separated, and at the time of the wedding they were already raising two daughters and later they had a son. In the summer of 1994, the doctor advised the soccer player to install the Elizarev apparatus. Van Boston recalled that the shin and foot were pierced by 22 metal rods. The parts where they came out of the leg through the skin, he wiped with alcohol three times a day, but he still suffered from inflammation three times. It was his last hope, so Marco endured. It turned out to be in vain. It got even worse. Marco recalled that even going to the bathroom then became a torment for him because he could not walk. He had to crawl on all fours, trying not to touch the floor with his right ankle. The slightest touch caused immense pain, and because of the constant intake of painkillers, he started having digestive problems. Meanwhile, Milan was also waiting for their star player to be able to go out on the field and pay Van Basten's salary for the entire duration of the contract, although he didn't take part in one game. During this time, the club became the national champions twice, as well as reached the final of the Champions League twice. In May 1995, Van Basten's condition worsened and he had inflammation of the tendons. Nevertheless, when his contract with Milan expired in June, the club offered him a new agreement, but Marco refused, considering it shameless to receive money without going out on the field. He announced his retirement from the sport on August 17, 1995, after consulting with doctors. He came to the conclusion that there was no point in struggling any further, because the pain in the ankle did not stop even after injections, and the bone was so fragile that it could break at any moment. The next day, making his farewell lap of honor at the San Siro in front of 85,000 spectators, Marco tried to hold back his tears, but many fans were weeping. Milan's coach Fabio Capello could not hold back tears either. He called Marco the greatest player he has ever coached, and his early retirement a great misfortune for him, for all soccer and for Milan. Milan Vice President Adriano Galliano in turn noted that the soccer world has lost its Leonardo da Vinci. After the end of his soccer career, the pain not only did not stop, but it also caused some psychological problems. All of his plans to play until the age of 36 collapsed at once, he had to start a new life while being practically disabled. In March 1996, Van Boston decided to undergo bone fusion surgery, which definitely put an end to the chances of returning to the sport. Yet such drastic measures did yield results. Gradually the pain subsided, and he started living a relatively normal life. Marco even appeared on the field during the farewell games of former teammates and scored several times. However, it was not without injuries in one of the veteran matches. He tore his cruciate ligaments and was recovering for nine months. Later, the legendary soccer player admitted that soccer is not worth the torment that he had to go through. He regretted that he had not finished his career earlier before the pain started affecting his daily life. In 1996, Van Boston started playing golf in Monaco where he then lived and in Kane. He took lessons and played about three or four times a week and after returning to the Netherlands, continued to play as part of the Nordwijk Golf Club. On April 2nd, 2000, the athlete made his debut in the top division of the Dutch golf competitions, which attracted unprecedented attention from the press and fans. For a long time, Marco van Boston stayed away from the soccer world and only in 2001 decided to follow the example of a friend 
to start a coaching career. In 2003, together with John Van Shipp, he headed the Young Ajax, Ajax reserve team. On July 29, 2004, Van Boston was appointed head coach of the Netherlands national team. He started rebuilding the team and clashed with the star players. The young coach's experiments with the squad caused a wave of criticism during all four years of being the head coach of the national team. He also largely abandoned the usual pattern of play of the Netherlands national team, making it more pragmatic and defensive. Under the leadership of Marco van Boston, the Orange squad made it to the 2006 World Cup, but lost to Portugal in the eighth finals. At the end of the same year, van Boston admitted to journalists that after Berlusconi's defeat in the elections, his tax fraud in Milan was discovered, and Marco specifically was required to return $38.6 million to the Italian treasury. When the danger of arrest passed, the Dutchman flew to Rome and achieved a reduction in the fine to $8.6 million. In 2007, Sky Sports put Marco van Boston at the top of the list of the greatest athletes whose careers were ended due to injuries. At the 2008 European Championship, Van Boston's team won all the matches in the group and was considered the fan favorite for the first round of the playoffs. But in the quarterfinals, the Russian national team sensationally won under the leadership of another Dutchman, Gus Hidnik. After the match, Van Boston went into the locker room of the Russians and congratulated them on their victory. And 10 days later, he left his post. In total, under the leadership of the former striker, the Dutch national team played 52 international matches, won 35 of them, and 31 ended in 0-0, which allowed Marco van Boston to set a national record of whitewashes. After Euro 2008, Marco became the coach of Ajax, but resigned on May 6, 2009, after his team did not receive the right to play in the Champions League following the results of the championship. After that, the Dutchman became an expert for the Sport 1 TV channel, but still planned to resume his coaching career. In 2012, he signed a contract with Heerenveen for a period of two years and led the team to eighth place in the 2012-2013 championship and the following season to fifth place. In 2014, Van Boston became the head coach of AZ, but his father died shortly after his appointment. After this stress, 50-year-old Marco began to have heart problems. The club granted him a leave of absence, but upon his return, the coach resigned and asked to be appointed as an assistant. Van Boston stated that the stress he constantly experiences as a head coach caused him physical and psychological problems. From August 2015 to September 2016, Van Boston was a member of the coaching staff of the Dutch national team as an assistant coach until he was appointed to the position of technical director of FIFA. He held this post until the fall of 2018, and as an official he was engaged in compiling an international calendar and implementing a video assistance system for arbitrators, VAR. He also proposed to carry out reforms, in particular to introduce clean time in soccer and to abolish offsides. In November 2019, Van Boston got into a scandal when he uttered a Nazi salute on the air. Soon the Dutchman apologized and explained that he wanted to pick at the journalist's German. This unfortunate joke cost him his job as a commentator in several sponsorship deals. In December 2019, Marco Van Boston's autobiography, Basta, My Life, My Truth, was published, in which he said he would never be a head coach again. He took any failure to heart which affected his family and was impatient with the players. Now the soccer legend is engaged in business, works as an expert on television, is engaged in golf, and he admits himself feels much freer. Although for a long time he was fixated on the injustice in his life, in recent years he has been able to stop thinking about what he has missed and start enjoying what he has. The media estimate his net worth at $17.2 million. Together with his wife, Marco lives in Amsterdam in a house for $7.8 million. The mansion has about 6,500 square feet of living space. There is a garden, and the bedroom windows overlook the pond in the neighboring Bondel Park. Since 1999, the couple has lived in Bad Hoverdorp, and after moving to Amsterdam for several years, they tried to sell the villa for almost $2.3 million, but eventually settled on a price of $1.5 million. The two-story house with an area of 4,000 square feet has six bedrooms, two bathrooms, a spacious kitchen, a living room, an attic, and a garden in the courtyard. With his first large salary, the soccer player bought himself a used Alfa Romeo Juliet. But after becoming a coach, he was seen driving an Audi A8. The words he received from the doctor as a child almost became prophetic for Marco van Boston. 
But the decision the soccer player made as a teenager allowed the world to see the soccer masterpieces he created. And which goal scored by Van Boston do you find the most beautiful? If you like the video, leave a like and also subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss anything interesting.